Uh, all right, welcome to another episode of the Write the Docs podcast. This is episode 35, and the topic is the Docs for Developers book uh, that Jared, Zach, Jen, David, Heidi, uh, various co-authors that we'll introduce have written. Uh, I'm your host, Tom Johnson. I'm also joined with Chris Ward, um, and we've got Zach and Jared on this on this call. So um, why don't we just introduce, introduce ourselves a little bit? Chris, do you want to just say a few words and then uh, followed by Jared and Zach? Sure. I'm a tech writer, <laughs> unsurprisingly, for a company. I think I'm actually wearing the branding. and no, I'm not. No, no, there I am. For a company called Chronosphere. Um, in the kind of cloud native monitoring space. Uh, so usually very technical stuff. Um, I'm in Berlin. It's Halloween. <laughs> That's right. That's right. This is a, a Halloween thing here. So it's like, <laughs> it's, it's, it's not Halloween episode. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Jared, can you introduce yourself? Tell us a little bit about, oh, that is a cool coffee cup, by the way. I uh, oh, got a. Cool. Well, thank you. It's my it's like, cactus coffee mug. Okay. Um, yeah, my name is Jared Bati. I'm a, I'm a tech writer. I am the lead writer at Waymo. Um, and it is also Halloween here in lovely Berkeley. And I have my giant spider decorations and candles. And uh, I have a Ghostbusters costume waiting uh, out in the living room for me to pop on when I uh, start handing out candy later tonight. So um i am one of the co-authors of uh the book docs for developers an engineer's field guide to technical writing and uh, i'm also here with zach uh, and zach would you like to introduce yourself absolutely so i'm zachary sarah corliss just call me zach i'm a technical writer shock uh i'm based out of victoria bc um we are more of a dia de muertos household here so uh, we have a very different set of decorations up, uh, but yeah, glad to be here. Well, thank you guys. Um, mm -hmm. All right, so let's jump into this, this topic in the book. Recent, you recently published Docs for Developers, an Engineer's Field Guide to Technical Writing, uh, published by A-Press. And, um, you know, this is targeted towards developers on writing documentation, right? That's your, that's your audience rather than the traditional tech writer. Um, just to kick us off here, can you tell us why, why did you feel existing books didn't fill these gaps? You know, what, what uh, kind of inspired you or motivated you to, to write this book? Sure. Uh, I mean, Zach and I have been kicking around the idea of publishing a book for a bit. Uh, based on our mutual work on uh, Kubernetes documentation for the Linux Foundation. And we found ourselves really teaching a lot of developers how to write content through doc sprints that we were leading at various open source conferences. So we saw a big knowledge gap for developers understanding why they were creating content, why it was important, how to do it, and just uh, how to navigate the ambiguity of creating great content. Uh, a number of books that existed uh, in the field that you know, I've referenced in my career uh, have been great, but they've been aimed primarily at technical writers to help them understand the process and become better writers. Um, so things like Every Page is Page One, Docs Like Code, Modern Technical Writing. Um, there's some great docs and books out there, but they were focused on writers becoming better writers and not on developers becoming better better writers and also just from just from a market perspective uh there's just a lot more developers than there are writers so we realized that just like there's always going to be more software engineers than there are technical writers unfortunately but that gives us a good opportunity to teach them how to create great documentation and understand our field better Oh, actually, on that, how how was this topic pitched? Because, you know, as you just already said, there's definitely more developers than writers. We also know that most developers don't want to write documentation, really. Um, so it's not going to be it's not going to be up there, maybe with like a JavaScript book 
shall we say, for a publisher's kind of bottom line. So maybe I'm making an assumption there, but you know, how did you pitch it as an idea to the company as, as, as worthwhile going ahead with? Mm -hmm. Well, I don't know that it's necessarily true that developers don't want to write documentation. I think, uh, I mean, so documentation doesn't exist for its own sake. Documentation exists to serve various needs. Uh, one of those needs is to scale support effectively. So uh, a developer who builds a really cool thing and then finds themselves uh, increasingly devoting time that they would use to build more things uh, giving one-to-one -one support for this amazing thing that they've built. And all of a sudden they're a support engineer. They're no longer uh, an architect. So, I mean, documentation helps scale uh, that engineer's one-to-one -one support into a one-to-many support. And it helps, uh, it helps engineers get back to what it is that they want to do. It's one of the, the values of, uh, of technical documentation. So, when we were pitching this book, um, you know, it's, I think Jared spoke to it well, uh, there's really a, an underserved market for engineers who um, need not only um, some of the really good advice that uh, other books on the market provide, um, but who also need uh, a good set of advice, if that makes sense. Uh, really sort of an end-to-end -end guide to creating content. Uh, I think specifically of like Docs Like Code, which is an amazing book uh, and has you know, arguably reshaped the, the current practice of technical documentation into um, the, the beautiful thing that it is now. Um, and uh, Docs Like Code begins with the presumption that you already know how to write. So, uh, it was identifying uh, the market based out of uh, the experience that we'd already had. Yeah, and just building on that, based on our experience working with developers uh, from Kubernetes and from other open source projects, we just saw like a number of developers were like, we want great docs. Like we, we want good docs. Like we have a demand for really good docs. We have no idea what we're doing and please help us. So. And this has shown up in various developer surveys, like the you know, GitHub surveys, uh, the recent um, Google State of DevOps uh, uh, report that came out, that, that there's a demand for, for great documentation. Like when, when developers don't have good documentation, they are very upset. Uh, but there was also this sort of lack of knowledge on how to build it. And so we saw a demand there. There's like a demand for it, but there's really nothing that's filling that gap. So how could we come into this space as experts and really convey our knowledge? One of the things I was curious about is how your experiences at different companies shaped your perspective on this. And one thing that has got me a little bit uh, curious lately is what the tech writer's role should be towards documentation. Should we be guiding developers to write their own documentation and act as coaches, editors, advisors, publishers, but really put the burden of content development on the development teams? Is that like what you see as the only uh, practical way to scale and to, to, I don't know, function? Or do you think that there's room for uh, tech writers as sole authors as well? I think as a Buddhist, I generally avoid uh, binaries. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So uh, I think like I, I don't I don't think it's an either or. I think you you do both as, as a as a tech writer. Um, I think uh, when I worked on I worked on Google Cloud for uh, about eight years, and I was doing a lot of authorship. I was doing a lot of writing content specifically for external audiences. Now I'm at Waymo. Uh, I am the I, I am a writer, and there are a thousand engineers. I think there's now like 1,500 engineers, but there's a lot of engineers and I am not going to write everything. I'm leading a lot of docs friends. Um, I am setting in a lot of process. I'm communicating out um, and been working with other writers to do some of that slow authorship that you're describing. So I, I, I think, you know, we can do, we can do both and it, we adjust based on the situation. Um, 
I think how we really try to tackle that in our book is describe like here's the general process by which you as a developer might create content. Here's some of the templates. Here's how you understand your user. Um, here's how you go into you know the trenches that we occupy on a daily basis in our work. And then uh, you know we also interweave like here are some advanced topics that as a developer you probably don't want to deal with. And that's when you should hire one of us. So we really try to, um, I don't know, thread that needle with, with our book. Um, and I think a lot of it just deals with scale at a certain point as well. And Zach, you look like you're uh, about to hop in here. No, just to agree that, uh, uh, that it's not so much a binary so much as it is a matter of um, the effective scale of resources on hand. So um, Tom, I increasingly see uh, the role of a writer as a curator, as uh, somebody who uh, you know, helps and boosts, uh, assists and enables. Uh, and um, I also see, I don't see like sole authorship going, going out of business anytime soon. Uh, I, I think increasingly like uh, at Stripe, we have an environment where there's a, a need uh, and a brisk business for both sort of models of uh, you know, writers as uh, uh, as empower of developers creating their own uh, content and uh, uh, helping that content uh, be as effective as possible. So where writers are really in, a, in an assisting role. Uh, and then I see also teams where uh, the value that writers bring is uh, being the first user and being able to document their own experience effectively for all the users who will follow them. So yeah, it's just, I think it's a matter of scale and resources at hand. Yeah, well, I mean, you had a, oh, I'm sorry, Tom, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. I no, mean, not. Zach, you had an amazing you know, experience doing this with the Linux Foundation where you were creating documentation processes for developers. And there was always this sort of give and take of like, what are the developers willing to do? And what's the process that we can put in place to best support that? And then what is the work that we as like a very, very, very small group of tech writers are willing to do? Um, but then also having a process where you can swap people in and out where um, different people, different tech writers led doc releases, uh, Hey, did you want to talk a bit about that? We can. Um, <laughs> Thomas, that where you'd like us to go? I, I do have I do have a question I wanted to throw in here before we get into like release doc releases and so on. Sure. You you mentioned that a lot of developers have an attitude of wanting to write. You said, you know, please help me figure out how to write because they, they want to have great documentation. What is it? They want to have great docs. Oh yeah. But <laughs> they want they to have great docs. but they don't know how to write. So they, they don't, don't know how scared they should be about and, it. And this is <laughs> But this is an attitude that might uh, have, I mean, tech writers typically have interpreted developer attitudes around writing with uh, no interest. Like developers are too busy, they don't wanna write, it's not their job, it's like, I hate writing, blah, blah, blah. But you're saying there's actually a lot of developers who want help, who want to write, who just don't know how. Like, can you comment maybe on those differing attitudes? How maybe I'm misinterpreting a lot of developers. Maybe I'm like taking over some of their content development stuff that like I just assumed they didn't want to do, but maybe they actually do want to write. I think some of that, um, I think historically that technical writing as a profession has struggled for legitimacy. I think there's a, a host of reasons behind that, but I think that they're, historically, um, technical writing has been treated as a, a para profession, like a, a para developer. Uh, and I think that for the past uh, 10, 15 years or so, uh, and definitely ongoing, that technical writing as a discipline is coming into its own as a, as a distinct competency all on its own. Um, so, it's not to say, I think that the experience of um, uh, almost being dismissive of writing, of not wanting to write, or, or thinking of this as an unsavory task, uh, I think in some ways that's linked to uh, historic struggles for legitimacy. 
but uh, I think uh, so this actually Jared and I just had a conversation uh, in the half hour before we started the show. Uh, like if you Google coding is hard, uh, you'll see there's a whole difference of opinion. Uh, yes, it's difficult. No, it's, it's very easy. You just have to do these things. Uh, whereas if you Google writing is hard, there's basically you know, two full cert pages of yes, it's very difficult. <laughs> Uh, so, you know, I think that there is the, I think Jared identifies it correctly. There's the desire for good docs. Uh, and the reason why we wrote this book was because there is, um, no clear link between the desire for good docs and an effective process to create them. That that's a great answer. And, and that leads into another question I had. Um, do you think that developers need like special instructions about writing that might be different, different from technical writing targeted instructions? You know, if like there's handbooks on technical writing, um, wh why wouldn't those serve to educate a developer? What, what's kind of lacking there? Or, or is there something unique that you kind of think developers need to know that maybe uh, is missing from the tech writer instruction on docs? That's a good question. I think, I, I think there is a fundamental understanding within the tech writing community of what good writing is and what good writing fundamentals are. And I think we often take it from that perspective of like, what is the, how do you construct a great sentence along with a great paragraph, along with a great document, along with a great set of documents? Um, and we have, you know, good content around that. I think uh, Docs Like Code, for example, um, Ann Gentle's book does a great job of saying, really leading in with, you are a great writer. Let us teach you, let me teach you about the technical aspects of applying that writing skills mm -hmm. to GitHub Markdown sharing content with developers and tying the writing process with the developer process. And so reading that book, you know, I, I love that book. Um, reading that book, I was like, I, I wanna write the opposite book. Uh, I think one of the goals of like all of our co-authors was to go, okay, but do software engineers understand that like they, they need to reach out to us as well? Like, like, this is a two-way street. Um, I, I do think there's been a lot of you know, outreach from the tech writer community to align with developers, but developers are just like, oh, wait, you're there? Oh, like I'm supposed to be working with you? So how do we communicate to them like, hey, here's our process. Here's how it will work for you. Um, here's how you can integrate with us. I, I concur, I guess. I come to it from a different point. Um, so. Tom, to your question is, the, do they have, do developers and writers have different sets of needs? Uh, and do, do developers need their own book about writing? Uh, I think so. I think that developers are, um, I think, very uh, focused on an outcome that uh, the outcome for most developers writing documentation um, frequently a practical one, uh, like an eminently sort of selfishly practical one, uh, which is, um, do I have enough documentation for this feature to go into the release? Have I met all of the, the, the gate checks for this feature to go into production? Uh, and uh, to the extent that there are quality checks attached to that gate check uh, for, for feature completeness, uh, then I think that developers want to meet those. But I think that the, the scope of a developer's ex experience of writing documentation is usually attached to feature completeness. And with writers, and, th and that's a very specific set of needs attached to that. How do you very effectively and competently uh, create feature complete documentation? Whereas writers are concerned with the practice of writing uh, in general, and not just writing, but um, information architecture. There's sort of all of the, the places that technical writing touches. So um, the practice of technical writing as a profession uh, has a very different set, and I would say uh, a broader set of needs and focuses than uh, developers who are getting to feature complete 
uh, in the most competent way with documentation. Chris, did you have any questions you wanted to A few ask? questions, yeah. <laughs> yeah, hit us. That's a wonderful segue is go flying by, unfortunately. So I'm going to just jump into this a bit awkwardly. Um, so I think um, collaborating on documentation in teams is, is something that many of us are relatively familiar with. But books are a little different. Uh, and often there has to be a thread of a narrative, whereas documentation, less so. Um, so firstly, how did you settle upon the co-authors you worked with and what was the process? Um, who picked what topic? I'm sure there were okay. heated discussions about people who wanted to pick different topics and so did everybody else, et cetera, et cetera. So, and work through that process of actually ending up with the, the final manuscript as it were in that process. So Jared, do you mind if I start on this one? Oh yeah, go for it. Yeah. Um, so I think one of the delights of this book was that none of us have ever written a book before so uh, we went into it very naively, and I think that naivete has saved us. Um, Jared mentioned earlier that uh, he and I had been talking for a long time, sharing our, our uh, experience about training developers to write. Uh, and that conversation evolved from, ah, oh, there's really no books for this. Could we write a book for this? Ah, oh, I guess we're writing a book for this. Uh, and once I think we got to that decision point, and this would have been about November or December of 2019, uh, it came to a question of, well, can, can you and I write this book? Well, we can, but it's not going to be as good as if we pull in more people to do it. And so we made a short list of people who we thought were luminaries in the field uh, and people who we knew were going to be accessible at the time uh, and sent out invitations. And I think we, I sent out, I wrote a proposal and I, I sent an invitation, I think, to seven other people. And to my absolute shock, uh, four of them said yes. I figured that we were gonna be really, really lucky uh, if, if I got maybe like a third of that list. But as it turns out, like the majority of the people, I think it was, um, we invited um, Brianna McNamara and Sarah Maddox to write and um, they both, very uh, enthusiastically uh, and, and with the most support possible said, um, thanks, but no. Uh, so how did we pick authors? Uh, ended up being an embarrassment of riches. We just you know, got lucky on the first spin. Yeah. Um, we were super active in the Write the Docs community. And I think that all, all of these people are people that we've met at Write the Docs conferences. So, um, I think that like that community really helped us write this book. Yes. Um, so just a big shout out to everyone. What, a, what the about podcast. the actual yeah. writing though? How did you manage to <laughs> get that together? And I mean, I'm guessing there's not going to be so much of a kind of unifier of voice, but definitely I think of from some of the questions we'll look at later um, of, I think of a better phrase than like a, a common thread running through those different voices. Well, I, I think you're kind of, you're, you're seeing our book, like you, you just see like the outer shell, but for us, it's like a Matryoshka doll where like there's, there's docs within docs within docs. Like we had, we had uh, decision-making agreements between us. Like we, we really talked about how, like when we disagree, how are we going to resolve those issues? Um, when we, uh, like, how are we going to have a consistent voice? Like, the book had a style guide. Um, we had uh, dedicated roles to, uh, you know, like, project managing the book, sort of editor-in-chief of the book, uh, people who are going to do a lot of the, the testing of the content. So we actually just really leveraged our tech writer skills uh, to create this book and sort of navigate around a lot of those conflicts. And we certainly did have conflicts, um, but we could always go back to these agreements that we made and said like, and there are people who are like, well, I don't think the chapter should be in this order and in this place in the book. And we're like, well, like three of us think that and we're gonna, we're just gonna go with this and we're gonna see if that's the right flow and then we'll take a look at this later. So we had these agreements about how we should work and we all documented them, which would made it really easy. Um, but I will say that working with publishers, 
publishers were really reluctant to take on a group of five co-authors. Um, they, uh, I, I think, uh, you know, we definitely got feedback from O'Reilly that like, hey, we're, we're a little concerned about the fact that there's so many authors uh, on this book and that that just creates a lot of risk. So when, uh, after that initial, like, like O'Reilly's like, yeah, we're, we're gonna pass on this one. Um, we created a document to our, our book proposal that was like, here's our working agreement as a group of authors. Here's why we're going to work really together as a group, why we're going to work together well as a group of authors and why this won't be a risk to you as a publisher when you work with us. Uh, and that helped a lot. And uh, in all of that, let's get, let's get, uh, get deep. What was a controversial topic or what was a controversial uh, opinion on a topic? What was one that uh, was heated, uh, got left out, got forced in despite it being a tough one, <laughs> et cetera, et cetera. There must have been something. I think there are a couple. Um, I don't know that there were any particularly no, well, I was going to say, I don't think there are any particularly contentious chapters, but um, now that I think about it, there were. Uh, I think I have to verify which chapter number it is. I've got the book right here. Uh, it's one of the, the final chapters. Uh, I think um, chapters 10 and 11, organizing docs and then maintaining and deprecating docs. Um, the shape of those chapters as it exists in this book is very different from the draft state. Uh, and the process of getting from draft to complete, um, the transformation was um, difficult uh, in the sense that, um, uh, in the sense that I think the uh, the uh, the author's original intent behind that chapter um, it was very uh, good, very powerful, um, and also very clear, but also not in alignment with the mm -hmm. collective agreement we had for the book as a whole. And I think it was the it was less the writing, honestly. That's the beauty of working with technical writers is that there was very little sentimental attachment to prose. I mean, we're so used to you know, editing and you know, having uh, no, uh, no particular ego attached to any particular turn of phrase that it made uh, the editing part of the book very easy. But um, coming, to, uh, coming to shared vision and alignment on uh, the vision for what particular material needed to do um, that was occasionally controversial. Can I throw in one more short one? I'll throw it back to you, Tom. Um, I have written a couple of technical books, like topics on technical subjects. And the problem that you always face is by the time you've finished it, some of the content is out of date. Um, is there anything like that in this book? I'm not sure. I, I can't, I'm not 100% sure. And I'm intrigued, intrigued to know if it's the same problem. <laughs> <laughs> we really actively tried to avoid mentioning any technology. Like we mm. really wanted to future proof the book. And I think um, the book, The Pragmatic Programmer, really jumps out yep. at me as a great yep. book that it's gives a, bit a lot dated. of, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I, actually, I actually think a lot of the concepts in it are still, still hold up. Like some of the technical examples don't, exactly, but all probably. the concepts do. And so we're like, can we hold on to those concepts? Um, we also wanted to weave an engaging story through it that sort of highlighted, here's a company that's using specific technologies and they have specific needs. Um, and weaving the story with that and some of the technologies and processes that we mentioned in the book with that. So that way we, we wouldn't have to update the book every six months. Um, we also have a really good index of additional resources that hey, if you want to learn more about technical writing, you want to use set tools, you want to um, you know, use specific publishing systems, here's some great additional content out there 
to uh, to engage with that. So, you know, it was a page from her own tech writing book of uh, don't uh, you know don't document things that are going to go out of date really quickly. I, I like your focus on. Sorry, that was coming back to an earlier theme here about um, focusing on the end to end process, right? The, the writing process as a whole rather than targeting any specific like technology or technique, uh, really kind of covering writing, editing, drafting, publishing. Um, just kind of curious. Uh, oh man, I lost my question <laughs> right in the middle of that, but um, I it's do Sunday. think that- you can, you can just <laughs> get faith in it, you can get it back. No, I, I, I did like that focus and um, just thinking more about developers and their needs, right? They, they probably don't have that background. Uh, Zach said this earlier, we just expect people know how to write, right? This is like the thing tech writers bring to the table whenever they're starting docs is this assumption that they, they know how to write. And in reality, uh, this process might be somewhat new to them. And now I remember my question. So did documenting the writing process from end to end make you realize anything about your own writing process that maybe you didn't know mm -hmm. before? Like, what well, did you learn something or have an epiphany about your own writing while writing this book? I would love for Jared to answer this question because I think he and I experience the same thing, but I think that he tells this especially well. I think, uh, well, thank you. Um, I think that's one of the things that I learned. Um, I was actually, I actually picked up from Heidi Waterhouse when she was editing uh, my sample chapters, I have chapters I was writing for the book. Um, I have this very tech writer way of breaking down the process and describing here are the steps that you need to do and follow to doc to write a set of documentation. Steps one, two, three, four, five, six. And one of the things that I was missing that Heidi was incredibly good at pointing out and integrating was how does it feel along the way? Uh, because I think the, like we talk about the anxiety of facing the blank page and starting a document from scratch and not knowing where to begin. And I think, um, you know, developers face this every day when they start writing a new class or a new library. Um, and really aligning that with like, this is not dissimilar to that feeling and you push through it. And there are ways, there are ways that you do that. And then at the end of that process, you feel accomplishment when you have published something and you see that it's being read and it's being in the same way that like when code is being used, you feel a certain set of accomplishment when that, when that PR gets approved and you push it, it like feels really good. And that is similar to when we publish docs, like we have that same feeling. So not only aligning with the, the process itself and just the, the cut and dry steps of the process, but also here's where you will feel accomplishment along the way. And you should, you should enjoy that revel in it. Um, I, I, I didn't integrate that a lot with my own writing and it's really changed how I perceive how I write for others, like really understanding my user and empathizing with the user that I write for. It, it is definitely a, a high to, to publish something. I mean, whether it's tech docs an article, blog posts, you know, it's just, it, you're right. It is like ex exhilarating and it should be a point that we help celebrate with, with the devs, right? Like congratulate them, make them feel that same sense of, of high. Zach, yeah. you wanted to add something or no? no just to echo um, that, uh, especially in the drafting chapter uh, where, uh, and so uh, that's Heidi's writing there where she talks about um, the experience of writer's block. And uh, here are some very concrete things that you can do to unblock yourself. Uh, in, in my mind, that's some of the best technical writing uh, out there because she talks about the experience of it. Uh, these are, uh, this is how you know you're blocked. These are some of the feelings associated with that. This is, uh, the feelings are uh, important to identify uh, that you are blocked. And here are some very specific things that you can do to unblock yourself 
even if it doesn't feel like you're unblocking, even no matter how you feel about this, these are concrete things that work. Uh, and just allowing for the range of possibility and anticipating the range of possibility. Um, so she's writing procedural documentation, but uh, also brilliantly anticipating uh, the a sudden breadth of use case uh, and then re-narrowing it back towards an outcome. So it's just, you know, chef's kiss, absolutely masterful. You know, um, my, my wife is uh, writing a thesis right now. She's in a master's program, but I feel like she's got a serious case of writer's block. She has been reading and reading and reading. Now she's read so much on the subject that it's sort of paralyzed her. And it's gotten to the point that she decided to rent out an Airbnb two hours away to lock herself in a room and force her to, herself to write. She's like, no distractions, no excuses. I'm just going to do it. And part of the challenge is that she she's literally so educated on the topic that it's very difficult. It's this paradox of knowing too much and it cripples your ability to write. It's almost easier to write when you kind of don't know that much about the topic. There's a weird, weird uh, uh, state of things. And this gets this gets right to the challenge of developers writing. They know too much. I mean, they they know they know so much. They don't even know what they don't know, first of all. And then they have so much to decide what to include. Um, you mentioned in the book, The Curse of Knowledge, right? This is one of the main challenges. They, they, they don't even know where to start. And, and a lot of times developers sort of react negatively in situations where we say, hey, will a reader know this? And they'll say, well, if they don't, then they shouldn't be using the product, you know, that kind of thing, um, which speaks to this inability to identify what are my starting points and for the user, uh, what are my assumptions? Um, so my question, I guess, for, for now is how do developers deal with the curse of knowledge? And does this like contribute to their writer's block? Like someone else. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very quick answer <laughs> yes yeah I, I uh yes i do 100 percent. i i i do think uh the curse of knowledge is a is a burden that uh that we all have um i mean i i think that it plays out for tech writers and for developers i think one of the things that we ran into in writing this book is that we knew the tech writing process so well that we had to really sort of split ourselves off of like, okay, wait, like they're not going to know all of this information. We need to really simplify and simplify and simplify. Um, like I, I picked up several books on like reading and dyslexia and how people read online when they um, have various visual challenges. And like, I went down this accessibility rabbit hole that is deep. <laughs> and I was like, I like pulled out like two sentences out of that research and stuck that in the book. Um, so it's like we have our own curse of knowledge as well. That's like always a challenge to you know hold our like our well educated selves in our mind, but then also communicate to somebody who's new to the field. Um, I I do think we really try to give some tools to help people understand our user. I think the process that we describe in our book is a lot different from the processes in other books on tech writing that are more general um, because developer audiences are really nuanced and <laughs> they can get really specific. So we, we start with that. Um, and then we also have a lot of sessions later in the book that are check your assumptions, like look at your analytics, uh, get user feedback. Um, like publishing a document is like the middle step of the entire process. I think a lot of books end on that and we're like, okay, now you're published and now you need to verify your assumptions, verify your assumptions again and like look at the data and make sure that you're not being blindsided by that curse of knowledge. Um, it's, uh, I, yeah, I think that's how we, came at that problem but it's it's a tough problem zach you wanted to you want to add to that oh um yeah, to go back to the initial question tom about uh how do developers get started when they are burdened by the curse of knowledge um i think 
where we point developers to in our book as a first step is uh, to, to start with prerequisites. What does someone who's going to use this need to know? Uh, what are, and you know, to, to concur with Jared, it's about writing prerequisites first. It's about um, unpacking your assumptions. What are you assuming that someone does know or must know uh, in order to use this feature effectively? Uh, and once, I think, you know, prerequisites are a good place to start because it starts a developer writing, it starts a person writing. And from prerequisites, um, something that we didn't say in the book, I think explicitly that I kind of wish that we had in hindsight uh, is to document um, not to the feature, but to the experience that you want people to have. So, uh, you know, what, what do you want as the developer of this feature, what do you want someone's experience of this feature to be? You know, um, I'm working on documentation right now that I think is really complicated. And um, I've devoted this whole upcoming week to reviews of this. And as I was kind of reading through some of the book, uh, some of your book, you mentioned right now that you had to try to simplify things and really make it uh, easier to follow. At the same time, there's this joke in the programming world about the how to draw an owl tutorial, which is like, here's how you draw an owl. You draw one circle, and I'll draw another circle, and I'll draw the rest of the owl, right? It's like um, this leap from the basics, like, oh, I'm going to list my prereqs and list uh, like how they create a new project, and now fill in the rest of the code to create a whole application that like integrates with the API and all this nonlinear functions that are being called and so on. It's like the, the jump is huge. Do you think that like um, there's this tendency to over encourage developers to write without sufficiently letting them know that like it can be really complicated and hard to articulate some of these things? I think so. And I think that's why we wrote this book. Uh, is to um, uh, make a statement like, you know, the, the, to reduce, right? well, I guess to make the, the draw the owl statement less uh, yeah. inherently reductive is uh, you know, to give, uh, to fill in that gap somewhat with uh, specific things to do uh, to, to get that owl drawn. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I. I was just thinking there's there's at least a couple of mentalities I've run into with tech writing on the one hand, and you brought this up with uh, the legitimizing the profession. On the one hand, we want to encourage developers to write and, and say, you know, you can do it. You know, it's it's not so hard. You just follow some basic processes and you get a draft and review and we'll iterate and so on. But on the other hand, it seems like there's also um, definitely a, a professional level where I sometimes think, you know what, I actually have skills that a lot of people don't have. And this is like really tough to pull off. And I probably shouldn't mislead people into thinking that it's easier than it is. Um, we, we don't always give ourselves credit for the, for the difficulties that we're overcoming with uh, yeah. our documentation. Um, where do you fall in this camp? Is tech writing like hard or is it easy if you just follow a few steps? Um, if it's... <laughs> If it's easy, you're going to upset all the tech writers, right? Who want the professional legit legitimacy. But if it, if you go with that angle, you're going to put off the developers who are trying to write. I, I realize that there's no statue that's going to be erected to the person who says like, wait, wait, there's a nuanced answer to this. Uh, <laughs> and yet, <laughs> here I am. Uh, I think that, uh, I think it's both. I think there, I think there, and, and I think there's a, you know, we, we definitely discussed this as a group of co-authors of like, uh, like what, what is the, like, like there are definitely like sort of advanced topics in technical writing that we didn't want to try to tackle in this book. Like we, we actively swerved around SEO, <laughs> which is like, there's a lot of books out there. We don't want to deal with that. Um, similar to like any sort of uh, translation, internationalization, localization, that whole process. We're like, we're, we're staying away from that. Um, so I think we, we kind of created this walled garden where we could say like, you're in a small team of developers, this is what the process looks like. Um, and our narrative, the narrative that we drew with our 
story about dog bark translation and the small team trying to write content around that. That was really to help us define our users and say, this is what we're going to focus on. Um, to you really define like this is a small team of, of developers, they're writing content um, around this API. This is what it's going to look like. And in that walled garden scenario, it is fairly easy and straightforward. And then at the end of that, we say, we have this whole you know, additional addendum to the book that is, there are certain points when you're going to want to hire an expert. <laughs> and, you know, you could definitely reach out to write the docs. You could like, here are some communities that you can reach out to. But in these different scenarios, like you, you are you know, rapidly scaling and taking on like thousands of new users and you, know, you have uh, you know, very like, you know, you're versioning, you're doing things like that that are going to be complicated. You might want to hire a professional to do that. So that's how we try to address this issue in the book. Cause I think you're exactly right. Uh, there is like, on one hand, I want developers to feel confident in writing content um, in the same way that I'd like tech writers who, you know, can read and do a little coding on their own. Um, but we as tech writers love writing content and developers like writing code. So I wouldn't expect a developer to spend, you know, vast majorities of their time writing docs. Um, but I want them to have the skills to be able to do it um, so that they can scale their own team. They can onboard new people through content. Um, they know, they understand how documentation is a tool that they can effectively use. Chris, do you have any more questions you want to throw at um, Jared and Zach? A weird anti-question in some respects. Because um, something on our list here about was about... Um, <laughs> Do developers read books? Um, because generally when developers want to answer developer questions, they end up on forums and things like that. And I had this in the back of my mind, but then I kind of thought, I don't actually think a developer is likely to be searching on Stack Overflow for how to write documentation. So, so actually, I think they are likely to read a book about it because it seems a more logical thing to do, bizarrely. I can't see a developer going, how do I write docs into Stack Overflow? <laughs> So, so I actually feel like a book is a more appropriate vehicle rather strangely. So it became a bit of an anti-question and I don't even know what it is anymore. But um, I guess I can lead it into, um, have you had any feedback yet from developers specifically? Um, yes. So first of all, shout out to the developers who helped review this content, uh, like specifically um, you know, Jim Angel, Brad Topol, uh, both of Kubernetes land. Um, uh, Larry Ullman from Stripe, people who uh, gave us very detailed uh, feedback about uh, the things in the book that worked and the things that didn't work for them. Uh, so we had a lot of good developer feedback during the process of creating the book. And then uh, afterwards, um, the, and just speaking anecdotally, the, the feedback that I've gotten uh, from developers has been uh, uh, very positive, very enthusiastic. Uh, uh, I would say like the most sort of common species of uh, like tweet reaction would be, I, I just picked up, I just picked up this book. Uh, I'm only like one or two chapters in and there's already uh, little pearls of wisdom that are, that are helping me. Uh, I would say that's been the most common response so far is that people are pleased and maybe even surprised that the book is as helpful as it is. Continuing on that, do you want to just let people know where they can get the book and what different formats are available? Uh, yeah, you can get it at uh, through A-Press. You can get it through uh, your local bookseller of choice. You can get it through Amazon. It's available currently in softcover uh, or um, through ebook. Um, you can also get it through your local library. L libraries love to know what people actually want to read. So uh, if uh, for whatever reason you want to go through your local library, ask them for it. And if there was going to be a, a version two or an updated version, what was left out that you wouldn't mind putting in or 
what would you do differently? Uh, <laughs> you want to talk about a controversial topic that will trigger, I think, uh, yeah, <laughs> quite a discussion about uh, what the next word should be. What I, how I will redirect that question or reframe it rather, uh, is that this field is wide open. Uh, we have not written a desk reference. We've written a field guide. We've written a book that uh, developers can use to accomplish a, a very developer specific task. There's a lot of room to um, write more about technical documentation and especially to research it. One of the walls that we ran up against uh, was that there just isn't a ton of documentation specific research out there. There's a lot about UX, uh, but there's not a ton on technical writing per se and on documentation. So there's uh, just a world, uh, an open world of research, of writing, um, and of funding to do. Um, at one point, um, Jared, Dave, and I, representing uh, Google, Stripe, and the Linux Foundation, respectively, talked very seriously about funding a Nielsen Norman Group report uh, on documentation, just because there isn't anything like that available. That, that sort of well-researched, uh, comprehensive overview of documentation. Jared, is there, what, what would you add to that? Uh, just if other people in the Write the Docs community want to get together and fund research for technical documentation, I, I think it's a, it's a necessity for, um, for I, our community to build legitimacy. Um, I feel like we had a previous episode with someone, I can't remember now, did we? Uh, you know, the topic of building bridges with academics and so on is recurring. So maybe that's mm. echoing here. I'm not really sure. Probably. Yeah. Um, I feel I like we there's, did. A lot of, there's a lot of good academic papers on like specific tools and sort of how people read online and things like that. Um, but I think one that's very like an industry paper that's specific to developer documentation would be incredibly useful to just convey the value of developer documentation and how developers learn. I mean, I think there is a there is a, a gap in knowledge of like, what is the most effective way through which developers learn new material? Yeah. And documentation, it does a great job of that. We know this anecdotally, but I really struggled to find specific papers that I could point to or specific research. And UX, the UX field actually has a lot of great research around this. Mm -hmm. um, and I would also just toss in that, uh, just adding on to what Zach was saying, when we pitched this to publishers, publishers were extraordinarily open to the book. Um, and they had a lot of different ideas of like, you know, a desk reference around technical documentation and sort of the end-to-end -end process, including like everything about API references from like code, uh, code comments through design docs to API references, which are things that we didn't cover uh, in this book, but um, it are huge fields that people could really dive into and write great books about. Um, and uh, publishers were open. And if other people out there in the community are interested in writing a book or making a pitch, uh, reaching out to a publisher, we are more than willing to share the pitch that we wrote, uh, the context we have in the publishing industry and give people guidance on that. Uh, how to navigate this process because uh, it is it is tricky if you don't know where to start. And I know a lot of people out there have ideas that they're kicking around about books for the field. I think the more books that we have in our field, the better. So um, feel free to reach out to us if you uh, if you need help navigating that process. That, that's great, and that's a great uh, theme to end on as well. And and I I wanted to just agree that there is kind of a dearth of of research about developers engaging in the writing process, right? I mean, there, uh, I've come across papers about why API docs fail and, you know, how do developers use API docs, but this whole process of developers actually writing docs is neglected and it's a huge gap, right? You see that in the GitHub surveys where people don't have adequate docs and well, why is that? Why aren't developers writing? And there's not great research on that that I've seen. But uh, maybe, maybe an academic can jump in and, and share some papers if they find it or other things. But uh, we, we are wrapping up here. We've, we've come to the end of our hour. Any last things you want to say as a concluding kind of uh, observation? Or are we ready to just... Um, I feel like we've left, the, left the most important question off, Tom. 
What is that? Like corgis. <laughs> yeah, do you have a corgi running around there in your background? <laughs> and so, and I've got a I've got a cat sleeping here. She's ah. she is so uh picture. Just give some context. She, this is the reference sleep the entire time. Uh, <laughs> yeah. no, I um I I met this lovely local San Francisco artist uh, named Nico Ng, and she draws corgis, and we just fell in love with her art, and uh, we also had this idea kicking around for a uh, for a company that we could highlight in the book to sort of create a fun narrative around, and so it just kind of magically came together. Um, Charlotte, who's sort of who's the lead character, is uh, the name of of David's daughter. Um, so we all kind of like contributed different characters and it kind of came around. It also gave us the opportunity to do a, a cowboy bebop reference uh, because the dog is officially named Ein. So for all you anime fans out there, uh, that one's for you. <laughs> that lost me completely. I thought you were referring <laughs> to a character from Teenage Mutant Ninja, Ninja Turtles called Bebop for a second. So that <laughs> no, shows true. my reference points. <laughs> no, but I get that one. I get that one too. 80s kid. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much, Jared, Zach, for coming on to our show and telling us about the book. And uh, I'll definitely include links in the show notes. And you can find everything at podcast.writethedocs.org. Uh, you'll find links to more info about Zach and Jared as well and Chris. Um, anything else that we need to cover? Thanks for having us. It's been a pleasure to be here. Thank you. And just a, a solid thank you to everyone in the Write to Doc, the Docs community Absolutely. who helped us write and review and research this book. Uh, we couldn't have done it without you. So thank you. Thank you all. Yes, thank you. And uh, just our, our closing statement is, is basically docs or it didn't happen. <laughs> Thanks.